Aloha, we're back from the break. Uh, uh, Jay and Pete have gone off to the bar to have a brewski or two, and I'm here with Jan Yu from HNEI. We're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is biodegradable plastic. We hear so much about uh, all the plastic in our oceans. Uh, they last for hundreds of years. Um, Jan has been working for years and years on a biodegradable plastic that if it goes in the ocean or in the rivers, it eventually decays and uh, returns to what it was uh, no normally. And he actually makes it out of uh, bio, uh, biomass. So I'm very pleased. Uh, welcome to the show, Jan. And uh, very pleased that you've agreed to come in and tell us about, uh, you know, one of these, uh, the, your technology that's really helping solve one of uh, our major problems here, both in Hawaii and the world. So welcome on board. And uh, first of all, um, we have a, the, the, the title is Natural Bioplastics and Hydrogen Char from Woody Biomass. So if we can haul up uh, slide two, please. Uh, let's talk about the, what you call the carbon circular economy. So tell us about yeah. that, Jan. Uh, thank you, Mitch, for having me here. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about that and my research. Um, you know, uh, I'm a technical person. I follow the policies you guys talking about. So here is a, a policy people are talking about is a carbon circular economy. So we, uh, because of the climate change, growing because of the CO2 release, all those kind of things. So basically it's very simple to understand that the carbon dioxide will be utilized to for tree and uh, grow the trees and the plants those kind of things so you can produce uh, products wood products and then biomass and the biomass can be burned to generate the energy and then you generate co2 but the co2 can be recycled so will not cause uh, co2 concentration increase in the air and the cause uh, climate change so my research work is look at the additional step that we use the biomass as a feedstock to produce uh, bioplastics and hydrogen char. So hydrogen char can be used directly for energy production, power our plants, and uh, the bioplastics can be used for packaging purpose, you know, film, uh, rigid containers, and after use, they can be, um, you can be used, uh, burned for energy recovery. And more importantly, the bioplastics can be biodegraded in rivers, in oceans. So we avoid the problem of the so-called plastic pollution in ocean. So next oh. slide, please. Okay, next slide. Yeah, I, so, I, have, okay. I have a question though, before you get going on that uh, slide, yes. let's just leave the slide yeah. up. Is just give us an idea of how long it would take uh, a piece of your biodegradable plastic to actually degrade if it's, uh, you know, in the water. Are we talking okay. weeks, months, or Excellent. years? Yeah, so it depends on the conditions. So in the, in the, the, in the marine waters, the ocean condition environment is the most difficult to, uh, for bacteria to grow and to uh, degrade the polymers because of the temperature is low and nutrients is low. So uh, in marine waters, it takes about one month to two months, basically. Okay. And if it is That's in not too the, bad. Yeah, not too bad. You know, in, in six months, definitely it's gone. It's gone. You cannot see right. them. All right, okay, and then um, in the rivers, for example, in the streams or whatever, then it takes about oh, uh, one month. It's it's completely gone. Okay, so that wow. is kind of degradation is very fast. So if it's in the industrial composting facility, then it takes one week, two weeks. It's gone. Oh really? Wow, that's yeah. very quick. Yeah, that's so awesome. That's very so, quick. Uh, I can show you some. Yeah, yeah, biodegraded. So, that's so a so real biodegraded bio... material. Okay, so what, what it biodegrades? <laughs> what does it actually turn into? Oh, okay. What, what are so the, basically, uh, yeah. What are the components? Okay, so Go this ahead. material is basically is uh, made by microorganisms as a carbon reserve, just like a starch accumulated in plant cells, just like uh, all your lipids in our seed. So that's a kind of energy. So we take 
interestingly, this type of material has a plastic, a thermal plastic property. Okay, so they can be degraded and utilized by the microorganisms in the environment. Now, so it's a good question. Will they be degraded? Okay, so if the microorganism has uh, sufficient oxygen, so the materials is degraded into CO2, carbon dioxide, water, and the things the bacteria will use this as a carbon source. So they also generate some biomass, cell mass, bacteria, uh, microorganism cell mass. So that's just like a starch. Okay. So okay. and anaerobic conditions, because there's a no oxygen, as for example, at the bottom of the river or ocean over there, then the the, the materials are degraded and, and and anaerobic conditions. So it's just like uh, some organic acids or messing or probably those kind of things depend on the microorganisms in the environment. Okay, so let's uh, flip up slide three then and talk about- uh, Yeah, second the slides. And, yeah. yeah so slide. there you go. when we talk about uh, the so-called uh, so carbon circular economy, people uh, use uh, the biomass, typically woody biomass from a forest management or agriculture, uh, residuals to fill the power plants. So we see that the um, United States is a major export, uh, exports those kind of uh, wood pellets. We export tons of those materials to Europe, to Asia, like Japan, to power the, to power the, the plants. Uh, and basically the biomass were, is used as a carbon neutral, neutral fuel, okay? So that is a relatively low energy because if you look at the the price of this uh, wood pellets or solid wood fuel, it's about one hundred thirty dollars per ton metric ton. But mm -hmm. if you look at the low biomass cost, maybe go up to sixty dollar per ton. So the, the the margin is not very high enough, but still seems very uh, marginally uh, uh, profitable. Okay. So at the so next price. Next slide, please. So at UH, uh, we develop a novel uh, so-called UH biorefinery technology that actually included two major equipments. Uh, the first equipment is called reactor. So in this reactor, we add the biomass like sawdust and the water and, and the special conditions are we do the hydrolysis. So the two products coming out from the reactor, one is called hydrochar. So basically the sawdust is carbonized. Okay, so hydrochar, it's black, black hydrochar. And then we also have a so-called aqueous solution coming from this reactor. Now this is a very interesting thing because it contains many, many we call it the organic hydrolysis. Okay, those are the very useful small molecules. So we use the feed this solution to the second equipment called a bioreactor. So in this reactor, we hide some microorganisms that can utilize those biomass hydrolysis in the aqueous solution to synthesize the polymers. And then we can, after finish that step, and then we can recover the polymers uh, as a product. So next uh, slide, please. Yeah, so that is a very, uh, a, a, a few pictures to show how the bioplastic is from the woody hydrolysis. So you can see the first picture shows a, lab, a laboratory equipment called a bioreactor. So that's a clear solution is introduced into the reactor. You can see there's a second picture show you the microorganisms microorganism, because they are very small. So in the electronic yeah. microscope, you can see the individual cells. And yeah. within those cells, you can see those uh, white granules. Those are the very interesting material we call the PHA, okay? PHA, mm -hmm. simple right? PHA. So PHA granules, okay, can be separated and purified into so-called microgranules. Now this very interesting material can be used to make a uh, sunscreen um, material. For example, when our industrial partners, uh, Bion, use this technology to produce a sunscreen that is environmental friendly because those granules 
uh, after use, people wash off and then they go to the ocean, but they'll be degraded very quickly. So we're not a cause plastic pollution in the, in the ocean. And of so course, one of this the problems. One, sorry, yeah, this is a problem. Uh, no, no, no. I think Hawaii has a ban on those sunscreens yes. or some chemicals because of some chemicals. I'm not very sure about that because I'm not a researcher in this area. But I know that uh, United Nations, including the states uh, in mainland, they ban those so called microplastics granules right. in those cosmetic uh, uh, products. Okay, so that yeah, like because of the micro, like yeah, microplastics pollution in water is a serious issue. Right. That's that's because the fish eat it or ingest yeah. it, not just fish, but uh, clams and uh, crust yeah. uh, crustaceans. Those are microplastics. It gets into the food. Very, yeah, they are very small because uh, the micro size, and they yeah. can get. They are not degraded in the environment. Uh, and then they will get into the fo our food chain, fish right. Right, and other uh, uh, food chain, and then probably get into our uh, human beings' food stuff. So right. that is a, a concern that the people ban those so-called microplastics used in the cosmetics. Right. But when we use those uh, natural plastic granules in those cosmetic products, and uh, they will not have this kind of problem because in the environment, they are quickly degraded into the, by the microorganisms in the environment. Right. Okay. Well, that's a, and that's of course, a tremendous contribution, yes. Yeah. So, and of course, you can be, as a plastic material, you can heat it and then be liquefied. And then when they cool down, it can be solidified again. So you can make a different shapes and forms and uh, different stuff, plastic, uh, Packaging uh, applications. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Next slide, please. So, in addition to the those uh, so-called bioplastics or natural bioplastics, uh, we have a major byproduct called hydrochar that is from the first reactor. So, again, this is a carbon neutral fuel, which is very interesting because compared to the, so I have a, a few comparison here about the coal, lignite, and a low biomass, and hydrochar. So you can see, compared with the original low biomass, like sawdust, the hydrochar has a much higher heating value, okay? Right. 40% uh, more uh, based on that. Wow. And uh, which yeah. is very close to the coal, you know, the heating value. And right. uh, then, of course, you can, you, it, it can, it's, it's a carbon uh, neutral, okay? So the people can, Use a hydrochar instead of biomass as a fuel, solid fuel. Okay. So, so can you also uh, can a mm -hmm. uh, quick question though? Can you also use it yes. as a soil amendment so that you actually uh, you know to increase the productivity of the soil? I know that Dr. Antal uh, was looking at uh, biochar to as a soil yeah. amendment to improve the growth of plants. Is is yeah. your hydrochar is similar? Question. Uh, no, the hydrochar is a little bit different from the char. Okay, yeah. uh, the hard, uh, uh, the, the basically there are di two different things. It looks like a similar, but in the water condition, in our uh, process condition, low, because lower temperature, lower pressure, and they are the, the oxygen and hydrogen in the original biomass are removed by about 50% not 100%. But in the microantos process, they use a very high temperature, very high. So basically you remove all the oxygen and hydrogen. So whatever left they call biochar is a porous material, okay? Right. Very porous. So the porous material, when you mix with the soil, it can help improve the soil structure. So that is kind of uh, so-called soil conditioner they use for that purpose. And uh, if you want to make that, yes, hydrochar can be further processed into right. make a biochar. So that's a different, two, two different things. Hydro, hydrochar so people, and biochar. Uh, yeah. yeah. So people talk a lot about uh, carbon sequestration. So yeah. where you want to capture what, what you're doing, you're growing a plant and you're 
uh, taking carbon dioxide out of the air and then you're running it through your process and you're actually recovering through your hydro uh, your hydro char you're actually recovering carbon so you yes. can actually sequester it by just plowing it into the soil or take it to that next step that you talked about to make yeah. uh, the biochar to actually improve the quality of the soil and well, uh, yeah. at some point in time I think the, they may have some economic incentives for uh there's a value for for sequestering carbon and I'm not yeah sure that's depend on the, the the price of the co2 right carbon dioxide <laughs> right now you have the how much carbon dioxide will be worth yeah. you know a price about the CO. so you're right so if you the, the hydro char is not burned as a fuel instead you leave that as a solid uh, carbon sequestration that's it's good right. So the CO2 yes. being uh, maintained and remain in the carbons remain in the biomass, solid biomass. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, for uh, oh, you, as you said that you can further process into the biochar to, to, right. to, for the soil condition purpose. Well, maybe there's a market for that uh, in addition to, or instead of using it as a fuel, maybe, you know, we'll, in the fullness of time as we want to really reduce carbon dioxide in the atmosphere we want to just yeah. sequ sequester the carbon part of that yeah so so so, so the technology will provide some options so it depends on your purpose you want to uh, keep the co2 as carbon as a solid phase or like a carbon sequences or you want to condition the soil or you want to just use it as a solid fuel to power like a fuel power plants so that's that's that's, that's a different options over there so right. in addition to the power plastics yeah okay next one please I'll probably is the last one already yeah, this is the last oh one. yeah so that's the last one it's called I give a very brief idea about the valorization of woody biomass so we start with a 100 kilogram biomass dry base okay so you have a largest section is a 47 percent uh, will be recovered as a uh, hydrochar. And the 10% will be bioplastic. 5% will be RCM, we call the residual cell mass. Okay, residual cell mass. So those are the three products coming out from the, from the process. And then, then another bigger one is a 38%, where that basically is a CO2 or other uh, losses, whatever, uh, from the biomass uh, lost. So that is the uh, overall mass balance of the process based on the 100 kilogram biomass. And then the slides, please show up the slides. Yeah, the so shows, then the if you look at the current price, of those uh, products and the biomass, so we can compare uh, the the cost and the potential uh, uh, price, uh, the benefit from the uh, the val value of the product byproducts. So you can see can we bring that, can we that. Bring that slide up, please. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So that one, you can see the right to figure. Show you. Okay, for one hundred kilogram biomass, we pay six dollar. Okay, that is a current high value we paid for biomass or farmers for that price. Uh, $6 for 100 kilogram biomass. And then we look at the products. First is a uh, hydrochar. Uh, we use same as uh, for the fuel, sort of fuel that about $7. And the forty dollar will be coming from our bar price, yes, because right now the <laughs> sales price at the bar price is about four dollar per kilogram. So that is a very big increase of the value over there. And then finally, we have a small amount of residual cell mass. That actually eighty percent of the residual cell mass is proteins. So we are looking for some kind of potential applications like. Uh, like uh, uh, fish food, or, you, know, uh, you know, animal feed, fish feed, those kind of <laughs> stuff for the protein. So we can, again, we can get some small, uh, add a small value to the products. So totally we'll be able to increase the value of the biomass by 8%, eight, sorry, eight folds, eight times. Okay. All right. So that is based 
very general comparison of the low biomass price and then the price of the products coming from the technology. So what is uh, what, what is the best feedstock for producing your uh, bioplastics? So, you know, traditionally, what 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 is what are you using? Okay, <laughs> so the best one, uh, it's depend. Okay, if we are talking about the the yield, okay, or easy to handle, yep. the best one is a glucose or starch. Right. Okay. Okay. Or sugar. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Like Brazil has lots of sugar, right? They, they fermented yeah, sure. as an ethanol, yeah, mm -hmm. to ferment it for ethanol purpose. So that, so that one is uh, that means conventional stuff, you know, starch, sugar. Some people even use oil, the vegetable oil, as a feedstock. Right. That is a good feedstock, easy to handle, available. Uh, so that means your process is simpler. Uh, but people are talking about the competition with the food and the feed and those kind of things, right? So the second one that's coming like those kind of non-food, non-food uh, feed stock. Okay. That is more difficult to handle because you can see that we have to add extra one step. Like a like a woody biomass or cellulosic biomass or agriculture waste, those cannot be used as a feed and a food, and then you want to convert them into polymers, biopolymers. Yeah. So that is extra cost. So depend on your your business, you know your 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 resource. Where you wanted to, what kind of you know you wanted to produce. Okay, so uh, we're just about ready to wind up now. So I just want to make one comment is uh, <laughs> for people out there in the audience that are looking for new business opportunities. I mean, here we have some really well, uh, some really good technology that's ready to go and it's uh, patented and uh, Jan uh, and the university are, um, you know, licensing. Uh, I think you're, some, of, some of these ideas are licensable, are they not, Jan? Uh, yeah, this technology I have to, and actually last slides will show some information about that. Uh, you know, the last one. Um, last yeah, time. we have a student that post us for laboratory work. I, uh, you know, we want to thank them for that for this excellent work. Sure. And then we also need uh, uh, we have a financial support from Bion. Uh, I have a few words about the Bion. The Bion is uh, is an Italian company. It's a startup, the biotech startup. Start they approached us about 10 years ago and they wanted to develop their business on the bioplastics mm -hmm. business. So um, so they licensed the technology, signed agreement with the UH, University of Hawaii. And they also uh, supported the research. Uh, right now, I think, they, I think there's opportunity there that any um, third part investment or people wanted to develop this so-called biomass, uh, the natural plastic and the woody, from woody biomass, uh, this technology, I think we still be able to negotiate, talk about the, yeah, things okay. like that. What okay. about the hydro char? The hydro char, you know, basically hydro char is a byproduct. So yes. the idea is that, okay, and because you are uh, you have something left over, actually the big chunk of the bomb is almost 40%. So you wanted to use yeah. this to increase the process, the product, the value of your, your product, right. your products, right? right? And uh, that that is a potential thing. So maybe some uh, company are more interested in the hydro char. Because right. this one is easier to be handled and processed mm -hmm. than the low well, biomass. Particularly if you, well, particularly if you can sell carbon credits, like you know the, if people say, yeah. oh well, we'll offset uh, carbon dioxide by going out and planting a forest full of tree, a bunch of trees. But how can you actually yeah. measure the fact that people are actually doing it? Whereas if yeah. you're producing your hydrochar, you can actually measure 
you know, so many tons of hydrochar. I've got it, and I've Come in there. it into the yeah, ground. You're right. Yes. You're right. You know, yeah. that's uh, if you have uh, 100 biomass, you got uh, those, uh, the 40% the that go to the polymers, and then 40% that left, you have a 6% carbon. You know, you still have a quite a lot of carbon uh, in solid yeah. phase. So you can, you can, you can probably, you can, you can use this as, 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 a, as kind of um, profit. Yeah, based profit. on the carbon CO2 profit. price. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just love talking about profits, but we've come to the end of our time. I told you it would go fast. So, Jan, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Demonstrating that, you know, the university and you in particular and HDMI are solving today's problems and uh, there's businesses to be had out there. So, well done and thank you very much. And uh, thank you for appearing on the show. So, we're... Thank Not you very together, much. So I'll do a little handshake across. Yeah. The, okay. The yeah. Well, have a good. <laughs> it's a good day. <laughs> thank thank okay. you so much. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, that Take winds care. us up. Uh, we're winding up okay. for today, and uh, we'll be back next Wednesday with another guest. I haven't actually found anybody yet, but I will. I always do. And uh, thank you so much for listening to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha.